<laughs> I, I never used rat poison, but from what I gather, it's really just terminals. Yeah. You can get like a window in a terminal, kind of. Yeah, that's about it. It's really not that great, but... It's like the most minimal, minimal anything. It's the most maximal a terminal is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's about right. But yeah, Ion, the one that Steve, Steve uses and that I'm starting to use... It's actually pretty weird because it, you can split up your screen. You make it a grid out of it. You can either, you know, and it actually handles like di separate monitors correctly, and it handles all this stuff. But it, you know, you can get menus, and you can do stuff like you can say bind. So when I push whatever, a little prompt pops up, and then I, if I type in, let's say me at me dot net, it'll open up a terminal in that frame. That is already SSHing. Ah. You know, it can do stuff like that. But all it really is is just split the window up into frames, resize them, move them. Each frame can have as many windows as you want, and they all get tabbed. And that's it. And, hmm. and you get bindings. You can bind keyboard things to stuff. It also does your uh, dual screen properly. I just said that. I wasn't listening to you at all. I can't stop looking at this horrible picture from Cluster Edge. Ugh. Yeah, remember Cluster Edge? The show that, that was, yeah. Well, there's this picture, and I'll put a link in the post, because I think it sums up everything that this show is very succinctly. Uh, you're not going to show the picture like the guys looking at each other or anything? I think this picture says it all. Uh, it's nothing to do with window managing. Uh, I had the window open, and I turned around, and I saw it, and it just distracted me. Oh, you don't window manager we forgot? Uh -huh. XFC. Oh, I've never used it. You used it. I remember you using it. When? No, I didn't. I ran mm. Windows for a long time. Uh, anyway, XFCE is like the in-between window manager. I used it a whole lot, but now I don't. I kind of forgot about it. It's yeah. like you get the nice gooey gnome stuff, but a lot less of it. But you actually have stuff, unlike Fluxbox, where you have like almost nothing. <laughs> you get like a panel, and you can customize the panel... And there's a bunch of uh, control panel settings you can set, and you can get menus that do things. You get themes. Yeah, because those menus that don't do anything are just awesome. It's like oh, it's like real light, and it does stuff, you know. But it uses GTK like GNOME does. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. It, you know, if someone has like a weak, weak computer, they can't, and they're they're you, it's no, someone you would normally give KDE or GNOME, but their computer's too weak. XFCE is like the trick. Yeah, it makes sense. Because you don't want to give them, like, ISWM, because they won't be able to make it look yeah, good. Yeah, and if... Well, you can't make it look good. <laughs> and if you're someone who, like, you know, is using something lesser, and it's not enough, but you don't like the slowness of GNOME and KDE, you can go to XFCE. Yep. Oh, Enlightenment. That's right. Yeah, Enlightenment is... interesting. <laughs> well, Enlightenment 16, which is what's currently stable... Oh, yeah, we're not going to... Not even 17, all the way. Yeah, 16, like, if you saw it a few years ago, it blow you away. It's so cool-looking, and it doesn't use as much resources as things that are less cool-looking. Yeah, but nowadays, it's not so impressive. That's really, like, the goal of it, is, is to look cool, you know, while uh, not using resources. But, you know, it's not really something you can use. I mean, some people use it, but I can't. It's like... It's not practical for doing anything. No, nah, unless you want, if you want a really cool desktop, like you see in the movies where someone's doing stuff in a movie on a computer, you could make something awesome in Enlightenment. Yeah, but Enlightenment 17 actually looks like it's useful, and it does all sorts of OS X things, and it's you know it doesn't use a whole bunch of resources. It's actually really wicked fast. It uses your video card for everything like it should. You uh -huh. know, it's all cool. And I got it to work. There's a live CD that you can get. It's eLive, the Enlightenment Live CD. You just put it in. You choose Enlightenment 17, and you can test it out on your computer to see what it's like. And it worked great. Yep. But can't get that to actually install permanently on my computer. <laughs> I mean, I can I can install from the live CD. You know, the distribution that's on the live CD copied my hard drive. But if I want to use Enlightenment 17 in Gen 2 or Ubuntu, I don't even think you can use it in Ubuntu or anything like that. I mean, people do it, 
but it's so much effort, and it's it's like you have to, you can ruin your computer like ten different ways trying to get it to go. <laughs> I think it'll be stable though within like a year or so, and you'll, you'll Gen- actually be to use in Gentoo. Don't you need to have like not even tilde, but like star? Yeah, it, it has the the hyphen star keyword, which, which is like beyond bleeding edge. It's like the knife already cut you. Yeah, it, you're pretty much just stabbing yourself. You know, they it's it's pretty much like we want to put these e builds in here because we made them and we put them in here if you really want to use them, but you should never use them. Yeah, they're not for you. <laughs> <laughs> the really the the trick behind dash star is that it, it's so hard to actually get something with dash star to install and work. You know. Well, maybe we should clarify in Gen two, there are keywords. Yeah. So, like, say, that normally it's x86. Well, it's x86 if you have an x86 yeah, processor. Yeah, most, most people have an x86 Some processor. people have PPC, yeah. an AMD64. Yeah. But anyway, so that's, like, the normal keyword, and you compile things. But some things are a little bleeding edge. So, like, version 9 of something will be out in x86. But 9.1 will be released under tilde. So you don't install that right away. It only moves to x86 when it's stable. Well, it's called tilde is testing. So when they make a new e-build, right? I made a new e-build for the new version. You put it in testing. Yep. And then as soon as it's cover, been tested enough, they take the tilde off. Star is like, yeah, I haven't even really compiled this yet. Here you go. Yeah, it's like we made an e-build. Here it is. It, you know, and the thing about testing is like when it's stable, that means it works on any machine with, you know, so if it's sometimes you'll see a package. It'll be like stable x86 and PPC. But if you have an AMD sixty four, it'll still be tilde. Yeah. You know, but if it's if it's regular x eighty six, that means it's guaranteed to work on any x eighty six computer, no matter what your combination of software is. Unless you have something broken. It's not a guarantee or a warranty, but it means that they've tested it. If your system is functioning properly, it will run on your processor. Yeah, ninety nine percent. But they don't make a guarantee about it. But it's pretty yeah. much guaranteed. Minus star isn't like tilde is saying we don't guarantee it might. Screw you, because Star is saying, I everything. guarantee this will break your computer. Go away. Yeah, there's a very slim chance it won't break your computer. <laughs> you know, you have to be like a real magician. Yeah, yeah. if you want to see Enlightenment 17, get that CD and look at how pretty it is, and then just forget about it, because you'll never get it. You'll get it like a year from now. When, or you can just take that live CD and install from the live CD. Uh-huh. The problem is, is I had it, the window manager crashed on me a bunch, but it does crash very gracefully. Yeah, that's so much better than not crashing. Well, Windows, you know, it crashes, right? And then you can't do anything, and pretty much your only resource is to reset the whole computer with a yep. hard reset. When Enlightenment crashes, it's just like, I've crashed. Will you please click this button, and now we'll start up again. And it starts <laughs> up again in like two seconds, you know? And it, that's the other good thing is that X won't crash, but Enlightenment will crash. So they, all your Windows will just lose all their windowing, and then they'll gain it all again. So you don't actually lose anything. Uh-huh. Window managers crashing isn't so bad. X crashing, you'll lose all your running X applications. You know? Yeah. But that doesn't happen. Actually, no, I haven't had it happen, except when I had video card broken things a long time ago. Yeah. What's really funny is that uh, I heard a, an interview with the Enlightenment guy, and apparently he's developing Enlightenment 17, using Enlightenment 16, running on an X server in OS X. So he has a Mac running OS X with X running on that, with Enlightenment 16 running on that, with an X Nest running Enlightenment 17 <laughs> to test Enlightenment 17 as he codes it. That reminds me of back at RIT when you would SSH into a CS machine and then SSH from that back to your machine and then from that to another machine and then you try to X forward over all that. Yeah, with, with a 3D program. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. If you make a loop of SSHs or you try to, like, go back at all ssh like freaking complains it's like oh my god security someone's spying on you oh my god (laughs) which i guess is good it's that smart yeah can't fool ssh it's really secure hey you can fool ssh one (laughs) yeah no one uses ssh one you'd be surprised no no i wouldn't i know a lot of people who there's a two uh should Mostly, like, like I don't even way. I don't even specify one or two. Two is the default. The, the you can't impl- use one. A lot of people are running old like Red Hat Seven machines that only support one unless you go into updates. Click, don't they notice that like red spinning thing? that no. says, update me. No, the update. Remember, 
Red Hat 7.2 is still supported and gets updates automatically. 7.1 and 7.3, you have to sign up for the Red Hat network, and you don't get all the updates, and it doesn't work so well. Don't, don't use Red Hat 7.1 or 7.3. I never understood this, like, old version of Red Hat thing. You know what? It's like, you get piece, 